All right, here we are. Now, we are here at the After Show Afterthoughts with my lovely Lou Willard Hoffman. And the radio program that we did talked so much about her coming north, being in in, in embraced by the community in New York City, uh, how she went to FIT, then she she really got a, a wonderful skill. We'll get a little bit more specific into that because she knows about it better than I do. And then the community that really embraced her and how her, her career has been one of many decades so that um, we are celebrating that she is still doing, uh, she is a gemologist. And she is still doing all of this to this day. So, hello, Lou. How you doing? Well, hello, Lenny. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Now, you know, correct me. All right. So, when we talked on radio, we were talking about how you came to New York City and um, how you had started with FIT, and then you, and then what happened was you came across someone who was really a, a skilled person in in gems and in, in fine jewelry did you not is the, it, yeah but he was a teacher at fit oh he was okay all yeah. right so that's how that happened okay mm -hmm. all right so and and after uh did you apprentice with him or you know no i i didn't i actually got a job in the jewelry industry with a company called j solo and sons and uh, they were on West 46th Street. And so I did my apprentice with them. I see. I, I actually see. worked with them about six years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, you know, it was it was a while before we be, became uh, acquainted. Um, that that happened during, you know, my run on Broadway. And then a, a great friend of Carl's told me to come and seek out this magnificent person who could deal with fine jewelry and there you were and there was Rick and um and that started our relationship all those many years ago uh and it's still through that through losing Rick to discovering Stan and having Stan and then now Stan is gone but here we are still standing you and I you know all these years and so I thank God for that that's a very important thing for me I thank God as well Lenny yes it's very important. It's very important. You know, uh, now, before, you know, I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, your activism, not only you talked about it when you were younger, but when you came into the New York area, you were very active with a lot of the social groups, with a lot of the political groups. And I want you to talk a little bit about it because I remember you talked about, you gave Charles Rangel his first um, political... <laughs> Yes. when he ran for Congress. Yes, yes. And that, and that served me well because until this day, we're all good friends. Charles Rangel, his wife, Alma. Yes. And Alma was uh, more than welcoming because, uh, because when he did go to Congress and he went to Washington, uh, they were living in Washington. I was always included in every single thing that they did, you know, politically meeting people. And I was, uh, uh, they would have a fashion show every year. Yeah. And I did the runway with the jewelry. And, you know, they just, you know, people were just so kind and so supportive. It almost, Lenny, is true uh, in some ways. It's not what you know. Sometimes it's who you know. Yes. Yes. Uh, because, yes. I mean, that came into play. But prior to that, all of that, uh, when I met and married Rick Willard, you know, don't forget, I was just before my 19th, 20th birthday, mm -hmm. uh, and he was in the music business. He was at that time, WNEW Radio. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were the Bob Darren, the William B. Williams, and all of those guys mm -hmm. that, and they were popular. That was the biggest radio station in New York City at that time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and it was then I met him on a baseball field. Did you know that? I no, have I didn't know. That. Yes, <laughs> uh, because uh, I think uh, at that time, Orja Smalls and I were the only uh, two, uh, well, we were models too, you know, but mm -hmm. at that time we were uh, the only two that, uh, you know, really weren't in music. Mm -hmm. But when I told you that I met Lena Brackley McFadden, 
when I first came to New York. Yes, yes. Okay. So Lena became my mother. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually lived with her for a little while. I mean, mm -hmm. she did everything for me. I mean, you know, she uh, advised me, she promoted me, she loved me. Oh. And so anyway, uh, that meeting Rick Willard on that baseball field opened up a lot of avenues for me because we actually, in a month or so, we started dating and within a year we were married. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Really? I yes. didn't know. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I didn't know it was that quickly. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. he was quick, you know. <laughs> So, uh, so, and at that time, you know, that was the start of me actually doing, uh, you know, starting, letting me know that I could do this on my own because mm -hmm. Ahmet Erdogan's wife, uh, Mika, she ordered jewelry from me. Um, you know, that, that it started in the record business now, you know, but that, you know, I have crossed the color line. Mm -hmm. with my jewelry because a lot of, a lot of white clients mm -hmm. a lot you know a lot of black clients you know mostly celebrities coming right out of the jewelry business yeah. out, out of the music business mm -hmm. and so uh you know all of the popular groups at that time like our friend sarah that we just lost lost yes uh, you yeah. know all those groups bought jewelry for me one time or the other mm -hmm. i don't mean as on it but as individuals yes and yeah. you know and remain friends with them you know throughout the well, you know yeah. what your, your clientele had many men many women you know the, you know we would go to functions and and i would you know i would i was always in awe of all the people who had really admired your skill and work and had had uh, ordered and 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 gotten jewelry from you and it was always a uh, a pleasure watching all of that, those relationships develop over the years. It's been a great pleasure. You know, I, I just think about that. And even though uh, Stan started in the music business, he ended up in um, in the uh, fighting arena, yeah, boxing, business, boxing, yeah. boxing arena. Uh, mm. Still, the arts has really touched your life all the way through, you know, um, it, because because boxing is a skill and it's an it's artistic skill, uh, mm -hmm. so everything that you've done really has been touched by it. Well, politically, um, what I, I know that you you uh, really have um, been involved in a lot of the social changes, especially in the city, but uh, all over the country. You you were involved. What was the most I think memorable? most memorable social change event you think that you were involved in in your life? Oh, well, Lenny, I'm going to have to think about that for a minute. Um, uh, you know, uh, I very, very uh, early on, uh, I was very involved uh, with uh, the movement, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, Black movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think we talked before about my integrating lunch counters and, you yes. know. yes. So I, I think perhaps when the social change came and black people were able to have more, enjoy more, and, and politically, uh, I mean, I supported Dave Dinkins through, you know, his whole career, yeah. uh, where even, and he became mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, uh, uh, Andy, um, <laughs> what am I trying to say? Uh, Andy Young down in Atlanta, you know, but people like that, they came to New York to raise money and, and we always did it for them. Yes, yes. A lot of fundraisers. I think service to people is probably the greatest thing a person could do mm -hmm. and humility. And, and people didn't buy from me because I was black. They bought from me because it was good. Yes. And I stood behind everything I ever sold. Yes, I, I agree. Know. I, I have yeah. rings that are, are 43 years old that I still wear to this day. Thank you very much. <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that uh, have t shown the test of time. You know, people still ask me about them. Um, the, the work is, is absolutely exquisite. And, but also the skill is exquisite, but what I really admire about you is your extension 
about how you became socially involved in and in, in the climate that we were so that the the diversity and and inclusion and equality that everyone talks about has been a part of your life oh for many decades uh it ha it's not a new thing and i think that a lot of people especially young people need to understand that it's not new that people have been um i believe involved in that and 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 hoping that that would be something that we would see in our lifetime an inclusion of everyone in an equal basis and you you worked really hard with that and all of the the different things that you've been working at you um i'm not going to hold you long now but i just i'm just so curious because i want the audience to know all the different facets uh of your life you you uh have wonderful son beautiful granddaughters uh all who are politically aware and all who are active you know socially in and things what then if if you if you don't have the the um the memory of uh, one specific event what is your proudest accomplishment then well i would have to say my family mm -hmm. Uh, would would be the proudest, uh, but um, you know I've mentored a lot of young people, and they and they they stick around. They're still around. I mean, I get calls from people all over the country now that I, whose lives I've touched and mm -hmm. lives mm -hmm. of touched and as well. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, uh, and the younger people, I uh, am. Uh, I have had my share of mentors. I, I remember I told you that I was uh, in a group of women. They were music men's wives. Yes. And yes. they took me in because I was young. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, and they and, and they, they were all role models. They all mentored me. I mean, I, you know, it, it was just unbelievable how welcoming uh, people were in New York to me. I was enthusiastic about everything, and I wanted to know. Uh, uh, even, you know, of course, it wasn't just the music men's. You know, we, uh, Jackie Robinson used to, I played softball. I was active in so many things, basketball. Mm -hmm. I played ba basketball toe-to-toe -to -toe with Althea Gibson. Oh, really? And I, really? Yes. And at that time, Sugar Ray Robinson had mentored her. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So there has been a black network, you know. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Jackie Robinson would uh, uh, be the empire on our softball team, and uh, Don Newcomb, Hank Aaron, uh, all these people. Uh, yes. And I had uh, many friends who were in the uh, in, in the um, uh, in, in the business that they were in like uh, Herb Douglas was vice president of Shefflin. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And there were magazines that were put out about, uh, about people you should know. Mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember, I'm stammering a little bit, but I, you know, I'm going back a very long time. Well, yes, oh, you know, and, it, it, and I'm asking you a lot of things that I, you know, I'm, I'm curious. So I'm asking you a lot of things that we haven't talked about, you know, so. Right now, you, you take for an instance, um, uh, the the, uh, the men who were vice presidents of these major corporations, which still exist, they were Shinley and, um, you know, they were liquor. As a matter of fact, I was once Miss Silver Satin Wine. Uh -huh. And that's a, yeah, and I was, I was, it was just a couple of weeks before my 18th birthday. So, of course, when they got wind of that, that was the end of that, but I still have the pictures and I still got paid. <laughs> so, <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Oh. Such an, you know, yeah, such I, an interesting was, life, you know, such an incredibly interesting life. Do you, do you think about maybe um, doing your memoir? Uh, I hadn't thought about it, Lenny, until you started awakening me uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, asking me these questions and making me remember all of these things. Mm -hmm. But if it will mm -hmm. help somebody along the way to know what you can do, if you work hard at it, mm -hmm. you know, I had, uh, 
I mean, I had a baby uh, and I was, uh, and I went back to work within a year or so. And, you know, I had somebody take care of my son uh, mm-hmm. then in school. I mean, you know, I, I did all of those things. And by the time you met me, I, I was able to have a full-time couple living in to do things with, you know, for me, with me. Exactly. I remember, I yes. Mm-hmm. That didn't start like that. I had to work toward that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, it, it, I think it, I think it's I think it's worth your thinking about, and and just you know um, starting to do notes about it because that's how my memoir. And I mean, I'm it was just it's just the beginning of 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 uh, what I think I'd like to set down and have people read about so that they can see again that it doesn't just start here. It starts really way back for me in childhood with great parents and great supportive family and and then ultimately a great husband who's been supportive. All those things are very important to put down so people can know. And and in your case, so many different facets of your life are important, you know, that that's opened up. And so many people would appreciate your telling this, you know, the stories of how you've met some of them. I mean, I know some of the young ladies that you have mentored and they are absolutely wonderful, you know, uh, to be around, to be, they are very articulate and, and uh, very intelligent. But I, I think, I, I think- And doing very I, well, and doing very well in yes, life. Yes, I think, you know, it, you know, it, it would be a, a, a great, a, a legacy and a footprint for you to try to put something down you know, um, so that people can benefit from your experiences. I, that's all I can say. That's my two cents. Now, I don't say, have anything else to say about it <laughs> because. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll think my energy last long enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanna, I really do want to thank you. I wanna thank you for taking the time to do the radio show. I wanna take, thank you so much for taking the time too, you know, I know that you've been very, very busy and, you know, we're caught up and we've got a chance to do the after show after thoughts and, and have people really see who was talking, um, a couple of weeks ago so that they can really understand, place the person with the voice and, and have a, another experience with it. And, and, you know, um, I am, uh, it's priceless to me for you to have well, done this. You has been a great highlight in my life. You know, uh, we've been how many friends for what 43, 44 years? Yes, yes, yes. And I love you, and it's always, always the same. It's always great seeing you, hearing from you. Well, you know, it's it. You know, it, and, it's uh, passing it down from my pa- my parents loved you so very much, and um, and you know, um, uh, and you were always so very good to them. And I thank you for that. And now here we are, you know, uh, a, a, an example of their love and it continues. It really does continue. And I thank you so very much. Uh, this and is- you're in the mentoring business as well. You, well, you, I, yeah. my grandmother. Yeah, it is, it is a, it's a form of mentoring when you direct and, and then, you know, you, you really want to show people I believe in not having people follow me, but to, to create leaders, you know, you, we, we really must have leaders in different facets. We don't have to have this great leadership that we once had, uh, in, in, in a lot of the black leadership that we had, but we need to have leaders in our social lives, in our economic lives, all through the, the, um, the social strata that we are in, it's important that we are competitive and we feel comfortable in leadership positions. And that's what I, I strive to tell people, you know, don't, don't question, just go through the door, uh, you know, and if it's locked, find out why it's locked and get the key. Well, you know, I think you and I share one philosophy and that is each one teach one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then it's not one, it's many, 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 but, uh, yes. you know, if you can help somebody as you pass along, then you're living. It's not in vain. That's mommy's favorite song. And yes, that's, that was her song. You know, yeah. if I can help somebody, in fact, it was going to be the name of my first book, but I think it might be the subtitle of my second one. But, uh, oh, you know. Away from you. <laughs> no, say, I say it again. Say it again. Say it again. I just like 
take it away from you. <laughs> I might beat you to it. Yeah, you might. Well, okay. <laughs> Well, I just have to thank you so very much. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. You know, um, it, it's 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 always it's always a pleasure uh, coming into your company. And I can't wait to see what's ahead of you, because this is another phase of life and, and it's exciting. And I know that you're going to succeed in that as you've succeeded in all the other phases. So thank you very mm -hmm. much. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, for in, and viewing us here in the after sh the after show afterthoughts with Lou Willard Hoffman and Lenny Godfrey and you can still listen to our radio show in Lenny Godfrey Straight No Chaser. Uh, Lou Willard is in the archives and you can have part one and part two. Either see the video first and listen to the radio or listen to the radio and come and see us on the video. All right. So thank you so very much and we'll see you on the radio, everyone. Thank you, Lenny. Bye. Good night. Bye. -bye.